Okay, folks, here we go again. Next pattern is going to be this one called Quan Chi. Um, Mimi has done it. I've done it sometime, but I don't remember when. But anyway, it's a fairly simple one. You're going to um, do a set of four parallel lines fairly close together. And then a big gap. And then four more. Okay. Then you're going to round. Put some roundy bits to enclose those so that they look like that. Okay. And then you can put these kind of S shapes. And then the last step you're going to do is you're going to go from here over to there, from here to there, and then close that loop. And then you can put the little S shape here. And it looks like a rope. Like that. And that enclosed loop, see they can be different shapes. They can be the nice round shape, but they can also be sort of a more triangular, more flat. And that's the Quan Chi. Fairly simple to do. I'm going to turn on my light. I picked a kind of a ready orange colored paper. And then of course we want to uh, stick that letter Q in there. And uh, I'm going to draw a nice big letter Q. Just a big capital Q. I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see that like that. I think I'm going to um, go here. And make the ends kind of come this way. Something like that. Yeah, that would be good. Something like that. So I want to do my four there. And then four there. Four there. Something like that. Now you probably can't see what I just did, but I just made some little guide marks as to where I think I might want those those knot pieces. All right, pen. Scoot my chair a little closer so I can reach my paper. That would be good. Always make sure you're ergonomically. Uh, set so that you're not hurting yourself. Something like that. You guys are way far away now. It's going to be a little close, but that's all right. looks good. I'm going to go and close these like 
that. That looks good. I like that. Okay. Sorry I wasn't chit-chatting. I, I always chit-chat. And for some reason, well, I, I, I've got, got things on my mind. So I'm just letting the, the patterns just kind of relax me. So I'm going to connect this one to that one. And this one to this one. Okay. I go all the way around the inside first and I'm not worried about the kind of the shape that it's making. Some of them will be bigger, some of them will be smaller. I'm not worried about it. And you'll notice that I'm not going in the same order as the step out. I'm not putting that little S shape bit in there just yet. Because I want to kind of play with my shapes first before I put that kind of rope thing happening. And now I'm going to go around and do the same thing on the other side. And I think I actually want to start. So how are you guys doing? Um, like I said, I've got a little couple of things on my mind today, so I might be a little quiet. My my brain will do that when I have things on my mind. I just I just kind of go quiet. I'm, I'm thinking, and my art really does help me to think, to pray. To meditate, to just quiet my mind, and to just let things settle a little bit. That ended up much more round than I expected. That's kind of cool. Okay. And now I think I want this piece, this, this, this one, to kind of come up and down and like that. I like on the sample how the ends, if you look at, you're looking at your sample, how the ends of some of those are like frayed rope. I, I like that look. Um, I think that's what I want to do. Okay. 
but I also want these to connect to each other. So I think I want to go like that. Connect that one to that one. Like it's almost like it's twisted. And maybe do this one just this way. And then it'll look like that cue that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do this one first, I think. Like that. Sorry about the dog next door barking. Nothing I can do about that. This one, if it's going to connect here, would come to this side, right? And this one would come and connect to this side, like that. And then this one can just kind of outward like that okay I'm, I'm I'm pleased with how that came out I'm going to erase all my pencil lines and then I'm going to come in and do the little kind of S shape to do the kind of rope business like that okay So now what we want to do is in here, we want to kind of go like an S shape, kind of. Like that. Something like that will create that rope uh, feel. And you'll notice I did these different si way than I did these. It, it really probably doesn't make any difference which side or direction you go as long as you're kind of consistent within the same loop. Your eye will figure it out. Your brain will create create a rope out of whatever you do. I'm going to go into my book, my question, questions for the game of life, my if book that I got at the library. You guys have seen me go through this before and I'm going to do the next question. I do believe we did the sports call question. So let's do this next one. If you had to name the most terrifying moment of your life so far, what would it be? Hmm. Um, the one where my heart just dropped was when we got a f early morning, like almost like five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. No, five thirty. It was early, an early, very early morning phone call from. Our son who was in a terrible car accident on the freeway and my heart just dropped um, my husband was already up he was gonna go for a bike ride I don't remember now if he was actually already on his ride and he turned around and came back 
that I don't remember or if he was preparing to leave for his ride. He usually leaves about 5.30 in the morning for those. At this point, it's a detail that I don't recall. But he came upstairs and woke me up and, and said, you know, get up, hurry up. Our son's been in an accident and my heart just dropped. That was, that was probably the worst moment so far. Had others. Uh, the, the moments where, um, people in our family have passed. Those also are, are ones that I remember really well, but those didn't terrify me like knowing my son had been in an accident. That that really just kind of terrified me. Because he was in such a... It was a bad accident. I, I'm really surprised they didn't total his car. They didn't. The insurance company did not total his car, which quite frankly surprised the heck out of us. But um, they said that it could be repaired, and they repaired it. But... I think it's because his car was relatively new at the time, uh, less than a year old, that um, that they repaired it. But it was, I think it cost over $15,000 in repairs. I was just really kind of surprised that they, that they paid that and that they didn't just... completely um, total it. And he was on the freeway and two cars in the lane next to him uh, got in an accident and then uh, they sort of bumper card around and bumped into him and then he kind of ended up swirling around bumper car style and uh, yeah everybody was spinning wildly on the freeway at like six o'clock in the morning that was crazy So now you know my m most terrifying, the, the one thing where my heart just dropped completely. I don't know if you're noticing, but none of these lines are the same. Some of them are fatter, some of them are skinnier, some of them go S to the left, some of them go S to the right, some of them aren't S's at all, some of them are just kind of C shapes. And I think, I'm as I'm drawing them, I think, oh, that's a, that's a bad shape. That's not going to look good. And then I s kind of stop and look at it and step back and go, you know, it's fine. Looks, looks just fine. I think part of this one is that when you do do it in a inconsistent way, it actually makes it look more real rope-like because real ropes are can be kind of oddly shaped. All right, let's, let's see what the next question is. If you had to be homeless for one year, where would you want to be? Hmm. Uh, I guess... I guess here in Southern California would be as good a place as any.
the communities, some of the communities here are very homeless friendly. Meaning that they allow large encampments and that sort of thing. I'm not sure that if I was homeless that I would want to be in a homeless encampment because well, for number one, I'm, I'm, I'm very much an introvert. And number two, I don't think I would feel safe. But then again, if I was homeless, I don't know if I would ever feel safe anywhere. So there's that. I like how this is coming out. Now you know what I'm thinking, right? I'm trying to think to myself, is there a way I can get a highlight on here? I, I know where I want to put shading. But can I also put highlights? I'm not sure. trail off like that. Okay, do you see my giant letter Q? I do. Okay, now I'm going to do some shading with Once I have that in, then I'll decide where I want to put shading elsewhere. But for sure, here. And in those spots where those ropes are coming together, because those would definitely be shady spots. going to shade here and here. Imagining in my head is the light is coming from over here where my where my light is and that it's casting a shadow where the rope kind of goes round on these edges like that. 
So I'm not going all the way on the sides, just partly. Just like that. I think I do want a little bit of highlighting, um, but I don't want it super bright with the like the pen. So I'm gonna just gonna use the pencil and a little bit here and there. I'm not gonna do like a super lot. Just putting it on the spots where I feel like the rope would be closer to me to really give it a some dimension. And pretty much wherever I didn't put shadow is where I'm putting my highlight. All right, one more question. If you could have one street or square or park in any city or town renamed after you, which one would you select and exactly what would the name be? Marks the way they already are. Don't think I'd want things named after me. It would have to be a new place, a completely newly created place. I think I would want a circular area. I'm envisioning something in a circle. Maybe it's just because I'm working on this circle piece, but I'm envisioning something in a circle. And I don't know what it would be called. Mandala Park. Meditation Park. Oh, Meditation Park. Meditation Grove. Meditation Circle. I don't know. Meditation Park. <laughs> Something circular. I would want to create a circular park. I don't know why. Just I just feel it like that would be that would be awesome. Maybe with a labyrinth in the middle. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice to have a park with a labyrinth in the middle? You guys ever uh, walked on a labyrinth? There was one at a place where we held our women's retreat for church. And we would walk the labyrinth as part of our retreat ritual. I really enjoyed that place. Not just because it was a nice venue. It was a nice venue, but I really, really liked that labyrinth. Because when you walk on a labyrinth, you know, you all start here. 
let's say for example you start here and you start walking up and down in and out in and out up and down up and down in and out and as each person you know after one person gets past the first two or three bends then the next person comes and as you're walking you're walking past one another yet at the same time you all you never cross paths you never bump into each other even though you're kind of you look like you're going to as you're walking toward one another but you're on a different actual bit of the path and it's sort of a metaphor for life as how you we can all be on the same path but at different points in our journey and that we can come near each other and support one another and then go away from each other and be very far apart but we're all on the same journey but at different points it's a very interesting metaphor and and you learn a lot of things as you walk through this labyrinth and it's it's fine to do by yourself but it's even more interesting to do as a larger group anyway that's that's my labyrinth story do i want a little more depth i'm thinking i want a little bit more depth with this i'm going to take my darker pencil uh, once again, I'm going to make my shadow coming from my light source coming from here. And I'm going to put a darker shadow on this, on the actual outside of to really reinforce that 3D effect by adding some outside shadow and I'm going to make it smudge more with my bigger stump. And that should help it look more like a real rope on a surface and bring it forward from the background. Oh yeah, very good, much better. Uh, that just brought it right up off the page. So now it's no longer flat against this page, but it's raised a little bit, much better. All right, I think I'm done. You guys have a really great day. I will see you on the next video, which is going to be Rango Swirl, I think. Um, yeah. I will see you next time you guys go out and do something nice for someone today and have a really, really great day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.